Christian Parenting. Welcome to Call to Love, where we discuss all things adoption and foster care and dive into the practical, the clinical, and most importantly, the biblical perspectives to help you and your family thrive. I'm Summer Colbert, adoptive mom, director of adoption and foster ministry, and champion for the Arkansas Baptist Children and Family Ministries. Adoption isn't just a process. It is an invitation to go on a journey with the Lord where you will experience life-changing opportunities to grow in your faith and learn to love in an entirely new way. One thing is for sure, being called to love means you will never be the same. Welcome, sweet families, to a new year here at Called to Love. And as we kick off the new year, you know, this is typically a time of self-reflection, and that is really just at the forefront of our minds more than possibly any other time of the year. And so along that line, we're going to apply a little self-reflection to our parenting as foster and adoptive parents. And so for the next several episodes, we're going to dive into a new series I'm calling Mindful Parenting. And joining me to speak into this topic is my new and dear friend, Kelly Hamilton. Kelly is a speaker, podcaster, certified trauma-informed life coach, and founder and executive director of The Connected Life. She's also an adoptive and bio mom with many years of experience in social services and trauma education, and she loves to minister to foster and adoptive families. I got to meet Kelly back in the fall at the Christian Alliance for Orphans Conference, and I was just blown away at her breakout session on this topic. So naturally, I had to introduce myself and ask her to come and share with you, our listeners. And so Kelly, welcome. Thank you so much for being here for this series. It is an honor to have you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. It's going to be really, really great conversation. As I have shared with you multiple times now, I have just been so impacted by your message, by your content, by the way that you teach it. Mm -hmm. And it is just too good for our listeners not to hear. And so as we begin, I want to give you an opportunity just for our listeners to get to know you a little bit on the professional and the personal level. So would you just begin by sharing with us a little bit of your story to becoming an adoptive mom and then eventually a trauma-informed life coach? Well, again, thank you so much for having me. And those are very kind words, and I really do appreciate it. I'm so glad that we were able to meet at CAFO. Um, yeah, my name is Kelly Hamilton. I've been married to my sweet husband for 20 years. We celebrated 20 this year. Yay. I know. Um, and we have two kids. I have my son is Caleb. He is nine years old. He is adapted um, domestically. And we are fortunate enough to have an open adoption and a relationship with his biological family, which wow. is a huge blessing. Huge, huge blessing. Mm-hmm. Um and then my daughter is eight. Her name is Emery. And uh, so they are 16 months apart. So they're very close in age and they are very close just with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, our journey towards adoption, I think is similar to, to many others. Uh, Blaine actually on our first date mentioned wanting to adopt and I was just there to eat tacos. So I thought it was a little forward. <laughs> But uh, he was like, yeah, one day I'm going to adopt. And I'm like, well, that's nice for you. That's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, exactly. I'm like, I'd like some more chips, please. Yeah. Um, but, you know, God really just kind of led our hearts there and really led our hearts to want to love a family. Mm-hmm. And so we were very passionate about, God, please let us have an open adoption. Wow. Um, you know, please let us have a relationship um, with this child's family so that they can have more family, um, yeah. you know, so that we can expand. Um, and right. yeah. And so we were really lucky to have that um, with with Caleb and, and his mom and and even now some of his extended family. So we're really fortunate. Oh, that's really special. And I love how you talk about that, just to sharing that family. And as we're talking about mindfulness, I think that's a really important point and information just to know about you is that perspective going into adoption, because there's a lot of fear, honestly, when we consider adoption and, and what that relationship with that family or a tie with another family might look like. And so that's really sweet. I want to, I want you to feel free to sprinkle that into our conversation as we go forward today. And as I was going through all of your content that I heard you teach 
several months back. Um, I was really trying to just figure out where a great place to start would be. And and I think mindfulness is the place Um, because if we're not mindful and and self-reflective, then we cannot grow as parents, right? And, And be better for our children. And so with that, let's just begin with this idea of mindfulness. What does it mean to be mindful, Kelly? And why is it important as we parent our children? Yeah, I think it's so good. So mindfulness is really just, you kind of hit the key word, awareness. It's really being aware of the present moment Mm -hmm. and identifying your own feelings, your own thoughts, and really your body sensations. Um, We try to teach our kids this, but oftentimes as parents, we're very disconnected um, from our own thoughts, feelings, and how our body is responding to certain things. Um, And so I think oftentimes mindfulness is really being in a state of unhurriedness. It's Mm -hmm. really being a state of not responding to a behavior not reacting, but really being purposeful in how we parent. Yeah. And then when we are are mindful in those times of dysregulation or stress, we can take a pause to see really what's happening and then how do we parent through it and not just react to it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Unhurried. That's mm. quite a word for the way that we do life nowadays, is it not? It is. It is. And it can look different. Unhurried could be that five-second pause. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be this 30-minute you know, break. It could be a pause in a moment. Yeah. Um, you know, It could even be, I need to just breathe for yeah. a second before I respond, yeah. um, before I engage, before I correct before anything else. I just need to be unhurried. I need to be mindful of what is presently happening Yeah, you know, in order to go forward with our kids. Absolutely. That's really good. And I'm thinking as you kicked us off in our session, you had us practice mindfulness and, and we had that moment of unhurried, like you had a captive audience. We didn't have anywhere else that we had to be in that moment. And so it was fantastic. And obviously we can't recreate that very well. I think through a podcast, (laughs) it was amazing how just pausing long enough to breathe, we closed our eyes. We were really focused in the moment and how that affected even like our perception and our body's ability itself. It was really amazing. I don't know if you're able to really speak to that, um, but I'm just thinking back to that and how really the value of, like you said, even five seconds to just breathe and take note of where we are in that moment. I mean, Talk about how we can build that really into the rhythms of our day, Kelly. I think that's really important for us because we get up every single day and this is just normal parenting, right? I mean, let's just remove foster and adoption out right. of it just a second. We get up and it's like, hurry, 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 get breakfast, get your backpack loaded, get this, get to work, get that deadline, this, get to practice, get to, you know, keep the tiny humans alive, do all the different things. And, and we're not mindful and we're not mindful of how it's affecting us physically as parents. And we're not mindful of how that's translating to our kids. So how can we build mindfulness into the rhythms of our day? Mm, That's so good. I think we have to first and foremost, remove the thought that it has to be a ton of time. Okay. You know, I hear that a lot from parents of, I don't have time to do that. And honestly, none of us do. We do live a very hurried, fast paced, packed schedule Mm -hmm. in our days. I think the moments that we can intentionally set is what's so important. So I think even having a moment of by yourself. So I'm an introvert. I need a minute by myself before my kids wake up. Same. I hate the mornings. I hate them. I hate waking up early. I do not like it. But I do it because I know I'm better for it. Mm. I'm a better parent. I'm a better person. I like myself better when I have a moment to regulate before the day starts. Um, And then even in the midst of kind of the chaos, so if you have, let's take after school or let's take that hour before dinner when everybody is losing their minds. Right. Right. And there's a behavior issue or there is just everybody's stress and you can feel the tension. You know, mindfulness there says, okay, 
I know everybody is breaking down. I don't need to necessarily correct behavior unless someone is in danger. Let's just have that caveat. All we need to do is focus on getting food and water into our bodies, and then we can figure out what's next. Um, You know, I think oftentimes mindfulness is saying, I have to check where I am. Am I hungry? Am I tired? Am I thirsty? Am I emotionally depleted? Yeah. I need to pause and see what is my need? How do I meet that need in order to respond in a more purposeful way? Hey, sweet friends. Have you ever heard of the Proverbs 31 woman? It's a passage that describes what makes an excellent wife or woman of God. But when reading it, it feels a bit distant and unattainable. Maybe like this is Superwoman we're reading about, or some Old Testament version of womanhood. Summer gives us an updated twist to the Proverbs 31 woman in her free downloadable resource, so that you can read it and feel encouraged and seen by God through your own 21st century experience. While the duties of the modern mom may look different today than hundreds of years ago, God is still the same. And this resource may inspire and comfort you that you're doing a good job, mama. You are more precious than jewels. The link is in the episode show notes, so you can download it today. Now, let's get back to the conversation. That's good. That is so, so good. I love that and how impactful it is, starting with us, Mm -hmm. to be able to ask ourselves those questions. And I think, like, we need to ask that. And you're talking about, am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Am I tired? Overstimulated is a big one for me. That will throw me off kilter faster than probably anything else. I relate to you in that. I am more introverted than people think that I am. And I do, I need moments where it's not people around yeah. me. And so I have to take that or the TV might be blasting or my phone might be going off and that triggers this urgent response in me. And so how can I be mindful to remove all of that for a moment so that I can gather myself and respond in a loving way that creates that stable environment that we want for our kids, right? And that's just parenting in general. Now let's add foster and adoption into that. And our kids who might be struggling with regulation because of brain cancer. They might be struggling with, they don't want to sit still long enough because if they sit still, then their brain goes active and they start remembering things that might feel scary or uncomfortable for them. So how can we start to teach our kids even, I mean, depending on the age, obviously, and the the levels of trauma and all those different things, obviously we're not going to pack into one episode today, but where's a good place for us to start Kelly in first practicing mindfulness for ourselves, but then teaching mindfulness to our kids. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great question. And I think the most important part is us doing it for ourselves Mm. and doing it in a way that our kids can see. Yeah. I think it's okay no matter what age. I mean, infant, toddler, all the way up to teen, young adult, it's good for us to practice regulating skills in front of our kids. Yes. So to even say, guys, I'm dysregulated. I need or I am my sensory, I am sensory overloaded. My skin is crawling. I need, and then fill in that blank. Because you're teaching them, one, we have to be able to identify yes. um, how we're feeling. And oftentimes our feelings come out in our bodies, right? Okay. Um, same as our kids, because they're human beings. This is how we all created. Yes. And then saying, being able to say, I need. Yeah. And being able to fill that in of, I just need three minutes. Um, to have some water and quiet, and then I'm absolutely going to do whatever you asked, or I'm absolutely going to you know, pay attention to that, but I need just a second. And I think when we do that in front of our kids, it's teaching them that it's okay to have any emotion that you are feeling. Yeah. It's okay. Emotions are a response. Oftentimes, emotions are a cue of an unmet need. Yeah. It's great. So you're angry? No problem. That's fine. Or you're sad? I get that. So what do you need? Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes, especially if we are avoiders of our emotions, we want to just put them aside and say, I need to control that. And what we really need to do is manage our emotions, process through them, process through what we're doing to meet that need. And when our kids see us doing that, it normalizes it for them to do it. Um, I had a kiddo the other day tell me, I am so angry. 
but she said it just like that. Yeah. And I am like, that is amazing. Tell me more. I was like, and so, and she was like, I am so angry. And she told me the situation. She was like, you know what? I just, oh, I just need to like chill out on the couch for a minute. I'm like, I am so proud of you that you were able to identify and verbalize how you were feeling, why you were feeling it and tell me what you need. Girl, like that is the most amazing thing. Most adults cannot do that. That is fantastic. Yes. Take take whatever time you need on the couch and, and do it. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're celebrating that, which builds that healthy pattern of, oh, when I do this, then I'm rewarded not only with praise, but I get what I need. Exactly. And then I can regulate. And then that just builds relationship and trust and connection. And you see how it just, you know, builds upon itself to really take us into this environment in our home and our relationships and our families, which is exactly where we want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. So fantastic. It sees the need and it validates it. And it says, yeah, that need is worthy to be met. Okay. I love that because right there you're speaking to value. And and that is our, our deep felt need and our core need as individuals that we feel seen, that we feel heard, that we feel loved. And I mean, that we feel valued in general as individuals. And so for our kids coming to us who might struggle with that, whether it's, you know, they, they've had it communicated in unhealthy ways. And so with parents who don't understand mindfulness, um, who, who weren't taught those skills. And so you're coming in and you're able to teach that not by use your words, but talking through that. Let you want to unpack that a little bit more? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And I am so uh <laughs> I am I, I have done the phrase. I have said the phrase, use your words. Same. <laughs> like, oh <laughs> goodness. Um yeah, I think that's really good. So this is something that is new for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Most of us have been taught that feelings are not valid. Yeah. That feelings are just kind of weak. And therefore, you know, suck it up, get over it, you know, move on. You're fine. You're fine. (laughs) And in reality, it's a sense of, no, I'm not fine. And my body is telling me I'm not fine. My spirit is telling me I'm not fine. And I need someone to see that, to help me, to soothe that. Mm -hmm. And in that, that all leads to attachment. You know, healthy attachment is where both individuals leave the relationship, leave the encounter feeling seen, safe, uh, seen, soothed, safe, and secure. Mm. And so being mindful of our own needs, our own responses, where we're responding from helps teach our kids and helps build healthy attachment and secure attachment with them. And what's amazing is that if they can build secure attachment with us, they will be able to build secure attachment with others in the future. So think of them as parents or think of them as a spouse or think of them as, my goodness, uh, a leader in the workforce, you know, and how healthy they will be. Yes. I love that you lead into that because that's going to be our next conversation. We're going to dive deep into attachment. But to your point, and I think this is a great place for us to pause in this conversation, Kelly, we are stewarding lives to become productive citizens of society, but also thriving humans. Yes. And it's not our place to do it for them, but we can lead and guide them by example, because they are going to learn far more by watching us than, you know, us pointing our finger at them and telling them do it this way and use your words and don't do that. And, you know, that sort of a thing. So to be able to build upon that and then sit back and enjoy the benefit of seeing thriving individuals and every developmental stage. I mean, that's the goal. And there's so much joy in that. And it starts, you think mindfulness. Oh, well, okay. But oh my goodness, where that begins. And then, then where that takes us as we go through our conversation today, what a blessing. We're going to pause in this conversation today and listeners come back for our next episode as we are going to dive deep into attachment. Kelly, thank you so much for this conversation. I'm so grateful for you. Oh, thanks so much for having me. 